What is up guys? So today we're going to bob out the 2003 Vulcan 1500 Mean Streak. I always kind of thought these were cool for, hey Loki, go back, bub. This is motorcycle time, not doggy time. I always kind of thought these were a cool cruiser with the seven, okay. He just wants to be in the shot too. I always thought these were a cool cruiser because they have the 17 inch wheels, kind of the sport bike brakes, uh, just kind of a low, mean, sporty, stylish look to him. So we're going to bob this bike out today because we got it for a super good deal and I just kind of want to know what it runs and rides like when it's been all chopped up. So a lot of this knowledge is just going to apply to pretty much any Japanese metric cruiser um, and probably even some Harleys too. I've never ripped into a Harley. So I don't know exactly how similar those would be, but pretty much, hey, bub, it's not doggy time. No, no, no. I'm closing the door. That's what you get. <laughs> um, but pretty much all this knowledge is going to like apply to any Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, or Kawasaki cruiser. They're all set up pretty similar um, and all the parts that I'm using today are just like universal parts that would work for any cafe racer or bobber build so it's gonna be pretty straightforward I'll try and film everything that I'm doing here but uh, the only thing I've done to it right now is remove the uh, stock mufflers and there was a catalytic converter and there was these chrome muffler guards so I kind of just taken that off because uh, I wanted wanted it to have some volume while I was riding it around here just as it is obviously took the mirrors off too because nobody needs those but so it's pretty much just in its standard form or pretty close to how it rolled out of the factory so and we will just Start ripping into it. Should be fun. Should be a good day. Should be a hard day, but we'll see if it works out. So I guess first things first, we're probably just gonna take off these handlebars. Um, so it looks like that there's these little tabs here that come off, and then you can see the bolts underneath there. A couple Phillips head bolts on the back side. We'll release the controls there and then with the way these handlebars typically you'll have like you know a riser that comes up your bar sets in there and then there's some clamps that go on top of it these ones actually just go down through and then they have bolts on the underside there so that's what we're going to be taking off and then the bars should just lift out but uh, yeah i'm going to take off the controls first so then we've got all of our controls off here. They're just kind of dangling down. They should be just fine like that. As I'm pulling the grips off, there's this little sticker in there that says death grip adhesive. Death grip adhesive, huh? I wouldn't use death grip adhesive going forward, guys. All right, so the handlebars, everything's off, controls are loose, there's really nothing attached to the top of the triple tree. So instead of having a one-piece handlebar like these were that just bolted essentially right into the triple tree, we we're gonna switch those out and go with a riser style. So then we will just bolt these risers on, which can then fit any style of handlebar that we want. And then we are going to go with chrome broomstick bars. There is not one bend in these. It is literally just like a broomstick. But I really like these. They seem to work good on the bobbers. They look super mean. So we're gonna give it a go and see what happens. Stay tuned. And then with the riser, um, I typically just get like universal stuff because I have all the tools. Like these bolts are a little bit wider than what the handlebars had on them. So I'm gonna have to drill out the triple tree just by like a millimeter. 
So it's not too bad. Um, you could get handlebar risers for your exact model of bike, but if you have the tools, honestly, just get the universal stuff and then drill out the hole if you need to. It's probably not gonna be off by much. So unfortunately, we do have to drill these out quick. It's not gonna take but 30 seconds. So basically, just get a riser that will fit the handlebars that you're gonna use. Um, so this is just a universal no-name one-inch riser for a one-inch bar chrome uh, I think they were well I'll I'll put some text up that'll say exactly the price that I paid for everything and then for the handlebars this is going to be a one inch diameter 32 inch long MGO broomstick handlebar chrome All right, got the risers in, so we're just gonna take the tops off, throw the bars in. We're not gonna tighten it down because we might need to slide them over to one side so we can get our grips on. And then I'll, well, I better bust out the grips that we bought too, so. Okay, and then for grips, we are doing these just universal one inch uh, spiked chrome grips. I've definitely used these on a few different bikes. They're not too bad. They already come with the throttle sleeve in them for your cables and everything. Even though it does have uh, spots for two cables, I've done them before on uh, throttle assemblies with just one cable and I never had any problems with it. Um, so we're just gonna hook this up to all of our throttle cables before we put it on the handlebar. You'll avoid a headache doing that. And, uh, and then we'll throw the bars in. Should be good to go. Oh, and then I will mention, since I just had to do this, but sometimes on these uh, throttle assemblies, kind of where it clamps around the bar right here, a lot of these throttles on these Japanese cruisers will have just a little nub right here that kind of sticks up. And it fits into a groove in the handlebar let's see yeah so there's the hole on the original one that that little nub fit into obviously there isn't one on these bars and so i could have drilled a little hole but i think it's almost just easier to uh take off that little nub there and it clamps around the bar you're not going to see it so i just use like a little hacksaw type thing and uh, it just works well to saw it a little bit from one side then saw it from the other side and then you just pop right off so just something that you'll run into if you're switching out bars and stuff so you know when you take a lunch break and you're just like ah, I want to make it quick I'm trying to get back to work get back to wrenching let me just hit McDonald's really quick, drive through, that's easy. And then you get back to work and you realize McDonald's was a terrible idea. That's where we're at right now, so. All right, so we got the straight bars on. All screws are back in, everything is lined up, good to go. Love the look of straight bars, my god. So mean. But it is the Kawasaki Mean Streak, so I guess it's appropriate. Uh, and then one thing, sometimes when you put like different bars on bikes, whether it's drag bars, broomstick bars, clip-ons, whatever it may be, um, sometimes your throttle will like want to stick um if your cables aren't routed right so just make sure you might have to reroute cables so like these ones did go through this kind of loop right here but that was just going to put them at a weird angle and uh the throttle was getting pinched so i just kind of did soft curves around here going down in you just want soft curves no sharp angles nothing to pinch that throttle you want it to just snap right back. So we are good to go on that. Everything's routed. So I guess now we're just going to pull off the seat and then the 
sissy bar rear fender um, and we're gonna find out exactly where we want to cut the frame now so that should be fun and there's no going back once we do that so that's always kind of terrifying also, I want to say that we are doing a budget bobber build. We are not building a $30,000 show bike. If somebody wants to pay us thirty grand for this bike when we're finished, of course we'll accept it and we'll thank them and that would be awesome. But no, we're just aiming for a budget bobber build. The bike was a deal right from the get-go. Um, then all the parts that we're putting onto it between the seat, the lights, the risers, the handlebars, the grips. What else am I missing? There's like six parts, basically. And we paid $170 total. Oh, and for the exhaust wrap, that was the sixth one. So we paid $170 total for all that. And then the parts that we take off from the stock bike, um, we are going to we're gonna sell those on eBay and see what money we can't get back. I mean, the seat's in excellent condition, and just for these seats alone, I mean, that could easily get us our $170 back right there. And so then we'll have handlebars, we're gonna have footboards, passenger pegs, sissy bar, rear fender, uh, turn signals, mirrors, tail light. We've got a lot of parts that we can sell, so we should have no problem actually making money on this bobber build. So that's ideally what you want. Not always what you get, but it is what we are going to get this time. So, all right, let's get back to wrenching. So, and then for the rear of this bike, I mean, we're just popping these two bolts off. There's two on the other side. That should let our sissy bar come off. Uh, the seat, all these metric cruisers are pretty much the same. There's usually like two tacks or two bolts somewhere around here. Or sometimes you'll see them up uh, on the front of the seat and then it just is held down by a lip in the back. This one's just one bolt here, same on the other side. One bolt right on the rear and then yeah, that's all there is to that. All right, so our seat and sissy bar is off now. Well, I'm gonna take off the passenger pegs too, so those two bolts. It's the same on the other side, and then the rear fender was held in kind of by those sissy bar bolts, um, and it just looks like there's two more right here. And then, since the taillight's mounted on the rear, we have a wire that sits in there running along a few little hangers which is just plugging in right here so we're just going to pull this out unplug that feed it back through and then we should be able to take off the whole rear end and then we're just going to decide where to cut it here all right so we've got our rear totally exposed this is kind of the part where it's like the sneak preview to kind of what your bobber is going to look like um, and I think it's going to be really good. I definitely like the angle of these shocks. It could be a little bit shorter, but might be fine. Um, honestly, I'm probably going to nip this pretty close to where these shocks are, I'm thinking. I mean, there's nothing structural about the rest of this. Like, we don't need it. It's not like there's a cross member here that is needed for support. So we can kind of just, these are like solid, but that kind of sounds hollow. So you never really know what you're gonna find out, if it's just gonna be like solid pipe, if it's gonna be hollow in the middle. So it's kind of part of the fun. But yeah, I think we're just, I'm gonna follow the angle of the shock. So our cut's gonna be like this. I mean, I could cut it straight down, but I think it's gonna look a little bit more, a little better if we just kind of follow that angle of the shock. And so I'll pry an inch away here, really just right at the end of the shock. I think I'm just gonna cut it, yep, essentially right where my finger's at. So I think that'll be just fine for our needs. And then I am a sucker for manual tools. So we are just gonna use the good old hacksaw. 
I think it's sharp enough. Kind of a bunk blade. I've got a few more. But, uh, yeah, well. Here goes nothing. Ain't no going back. YOLO! Oops. Ho 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 ho. It's just the hardest to get it started. And then once you have it started, then you're good. Alright, there we go. I think we got a clean start. Let's see how long this takes. One eternity later. Alright, so that definitely is some hard work. Like literally hand sawing with a hacksaw through the rear frame, through that steel frame. But our cuts came out really good. Um, and you can see there's just like one circular tube which kind of goes back up here. So we're going to want to plug that one. And then this square shaped tube actually has an opening right here so water could get out of there through that little opening so probably not going to block off the rear part and truth be told I'm probably just going to put some wine corks uh, in that tubing there budget bobbers so now next now that it's all coming together uh, we're gonna bust out our seat, and it's just a, kind of a universal solo bobber seat. Well, I'll open it up here and get it out so you can kind of see it as I'm talking about it. All right, so we've got our seat kind of unpackaged here. Um, so as you can see, I did go with like a alligator kind of skin, which it is textured, so parts of it are like raised and it does like feel like a gator, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's the same price as just the regular uh, black and brown and all the other ones. Uh, so in our kit, we kind of got the whole kit where it's the seat, comes with the springs, comes with this uh, bracket that will get mounted to the bottom of there. And then it comes with this base plate which is kind of going to cover all of our shenanigans up here. Actually, that's going to be a pretty good fit. Um, they do have this little hole on the back, so in our case, some of these bikes will have like a rear cross member like this. There happens to be a bolt right there in the middle. So that is going to work super well for our seat there. We'll just bend and angle that just a touch. Um, and then they do have this bolt that goes through it Sometimes I will use this if I have a seat that has bolts up here that hold it down. You can get away with running this through um, those holes and kind of uh, clamp the front of it down on there. Since our seat was tacked in back here and just had a, a tongue on the seat that held it down in the front, we're probably not going to use these wings and that bolt. I might end up just cutting those off. And since this has a hole right there, we're probably going to angle that up a little bit. And we're just going to put it flush up against here and then use that bolt to tack it in. So that's going to hold our nose down. We're going to use that bolt there to tack down the rear. And honestly, that's probably going to be plenty sturdy to keep that base plate and the whole seat on. Um, we just got to kind of start lining things up and then we'll see what it looks like. But for that seat, you can just look up solo bobber motorcycle seat and they'll just come up. And like I said, I got the alligator one. You'll see a few of those, like snakeskin and alligator. I think they're kind of cool. Some people probably think they're cheesy. We're just going to do it for this one. Um, but you should have no problem finding kits that have everything you need with the springs, the plate, the seat, this angle iron. Um, and I've seen these kits anywhere from $30 to $90. 
Um, some of it depends, like if you get a seat with nicer stitching and everything, some of those kits will be closer to that 90. Um, I forget exactly what we paid for this one, but I'll have text up on the screen here, obviously, that says all that. Um, so yeah, let's just rip into it and see if we can't get this seat mounted. <sighs> We're getting close. All right, guys, so I figured out a pretty slick fix for this after I stared at it for a while. But, so this is a little tongue holder that the stock seat, the front of it, slipped under there. And that would kind of hold it down. So I just drilled a hole through that, the same size as the bolt we had that went through these two wings on the front of the seat. So then... Oops, this should is going to sit on there and we'll be able to put this through. Yep, and that's going to work fine. And then I took out the bolt here on the rear that was holding that one thing on. So that's just kind of loose now. But uh, so I have a longer bolt that we're going to put in there that is going to seat that nicely. And then uh, we're just gonna tighten that all down. I'm gonna throw in the springs and uh, hopefully this thing will sit all right on there. We'll pull it forward a little and kinda adjust some tabs and things, get it to seat nice. But I just deemed that drilling that hole was probably gonna be the best way to mount that on there. We could have done a few other things. Honestly, that's the good thing about getting these universal parts. You can literally go whatever direction you want with them. You could drill a hole and fasten it that way. You could just use whatever's on the seat, whatever's on the bike, whatever you can do. There's really no wrong way to do it. As long as it, oops, that's angled down a little. As long as it holds, you on the bike and you know, it doesn't flop around call it good call it good so let's go cinch that down and see what things are starting to let's see what things look like after that alrighty so then our seat is on very firmly so then we just ran that bolt through the hole um, that we drilled through that tongue uh, or that seat holder for the tongue that was on the stock seat uh, we just got a longer bolt for this little guy right there seems to be working good might tighten that just a touch more and then now we're just going to loosen all of our nuts and put our springs on ideally our seat should sit about right there so but God damn, this thing is coming together fucking quickly. It's awesome. All right, so we got our seat on then. Here's kind of what it's looking like then. That alligator, I think it turned out good. So, everything was pretty straightforward. Sometimes you gotta, if you do these Springer seats, you really gotta fight with them to get that top nut first started. I'll start the tops and then I do the bottoms. So I will just run, actually the hole in the bottom is big enough that you can uh, fit a socket up in there with an extension and tighten that one. So that works easy for the top and then the bottom ones, you just like gotta get your pinkies in there and slowly tighten that nut and then you slip a wrench in there and just a quarter turn at a time, uh, it's kind of, Kind of a pain in the butt, but pain in the butt, but ah, oh, that's funny. Uh, but it works. So now we are going to wire up our tail light. We're just gonna do one of these uh, LED strip lights. Seem to like these a lot. I used to get these for like six or seven dollars per light, and I was like, oh, that's a great deal. Well now on eBay, I get the four packs of these for like $9.
So, and from my experience, these have about a 10% failure rate. So like, just get a two pack or a four pack or something, just in case one of them, the LEDs are funky or you have a problem or you break it or something. But, so we've got a couple extras just in case anything happens. But for this one, I'm thinking we're just gonna slip it right up in here, just about like that. And we've got these holes right here. Um, so honestly, I'm just gonna take a zip tie and run it around there. And that is gonna be our, uh, what holds that on, I think. I sure love my zip ties. And then these just have, so these actually have a turn signals uh, in them integrated that the side will flash yellow, otherwise it's all red. Um, and then a brighter red, obviously, for the brake light. Um, <clears throat> we're not rocking turn signals on this bike. I'm in Nebraska, and so you're legally allowed to use hand signals. So we're just not going to worry about the turn signals, since I don't have them on the front anyways. Um, so, you can see our connector here that we had unplugged uh, from our whole taillight assembly when we had taken out the fender. So what I will always do is you don't want to cut into that wire um, like to cut the head off that connector and then start splicing those wires you always want the connector to stay there if it's on like the I don't know what I'm trying to say the pigtail that runs into the bike we don't really want to touch that so I will go to like well I'll show you it's like on my rear fender where we had our wire there. I will cut that just about, oh, I mean any length is fine, but I'll leave myself plenty of room to work with and then just use that connector so that my, so that my wiring harness uh, from the connector that goes into the bike, I never have to touch that, it's always good. So worst case scenario, if I really mess something up, I can just get a new rear harness I'm not, I don't have to worry about anything on the bike. So we are just gonna kinda splice these together. Actually, I probably gotta run to the store and get some connectors and electrical tape. So we are just gonna plug this guy right in there and then splice our wires together, kinda tuck these back up in there, zip tie it on, and then that should be our tail light, but God damn, this thing is coming together. Gosh, it looks so different. It hasn't been any time at all. So, of course we'll have to give it a good wash at the end, kind of sparkle her up, but that alligator solo seat and the straight bars, man. Can you tell I love bobbers? I love bobbers. The girlfriend hates him, but that's fine. Okay, so we got our brake light wired up then. So that's just sitting right down there. I tested it, everything works good. So now the last thing for today, um, if we had like an exhaust system, you know, obviously we just bolt that on, maybe it'd already be on. Uh, we're just gonna run straight headers on this for now. It's not too loud. I mean, it's loud, but we're just gonna do straight headers. And so all we're gonna do for that is just wrap the exhaust. I have like this black uh, fiberglass wrap or something like that. Um, it was super cheap. So we're just gonna throw that on quick. And then I think we're gonna call it a day. We're gonna stop and stare at it for a little bit and then decide if we want to paint it or not. I feel like there was something else I wanted to do. Oh, yeah. So now that we had had the rear fender off, we can kind of see our clearances on the rear because um, I'm down to the wear bars on this tire. Uh, we have plenty of clearance. I'd say close to three quarters of an inch in between the tire and then the shaft drive system. Um, and then about an inch on the other side, 
Uh, so the stock tires are 170, 60, 17. And I think we're just gonna go up to a 200. Um, it should fit, we should have no problems. So in that 200 on the rear is just gonna make it look a lot fatter. Probably just a lot better. And when you bob out these bikes, you know, and then you have the whole rear tire exposed, I mean, you kind of just want the biggest tire you can fit on there. So we'll do the old 200 and then, yeah, we'll decide on pain as soon as we have the exhaust wrapped here. So exhaust wrap time. So since we are just running straight headers, I'm electing to just take the headers off and make this whole process of wrapping these things just way easier instead of trying to go around all the tight spots in this we're just gonna pull off the headers and wrap them that way it's just gonna be way quicker and it's only two bolts for each of these so that is what I have decided to do so and then this exhaust wrap I forget exactly how much it was I will post the price right here And what to look for, I mean, you can just look up motorcycle exhaust wrap, black, or whatever color you want. I mean, they have blue, greens, reds, purple, yellow. Um, from what I've read and from what I've seen, if you get the colored ones, like if we were to do a green exhaust wrap on this, it's probably only going to be green for like maybe a week, tops. And then they kind of start to discolor um, when the headers get hot. So typically you'll have just the best luck with like black. Uh, so that's what we did because sometimes the white ones then turn like a cream color. Or... So we just played it safe by using or getting the black one. Um, you'll probably want to have gloves for this because this fiberglass stuff could make you very itchy. So we are set. And then it comes with like all the steel zip ties you need so you can just cinch those around uh, the top once you kind of get that and then just wrap it around as you go down uh, this is two inch wide exhaust wrap so they do sell like one inch wide exhaust wrap um, and kind of the way you're supposed to do this is if you get the two inch then you're gonna kind of overlap by an inch as you're wrapping it around. And if you get the one inch, then you're gonna overlap by half an inch. So kind of just half of whatever the diameter is that you're working with, and then you should be good to go. So, all right, let's see how this goes. This is such a more tedious job and more difficult than I initially assumed. Like, have to stretch this tight and watch your overlap to make sure that that's going good. Not to mention, this does not look black, does it? No, it looks about slate gray or charcoal to me. But whatever, we're going through with it. Really hoping that this would just be like a midnight black, but oh well. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes you just gotta keep pressing on. All right, we got the exhaust wrap done. It actually looks really good for what it is. Um, I was impressed with it seemed to lay down fairly smooth tried to get my overlaps even I think we did all right I ain't gonna do it again because that is the dirtiest like uh, I am itchy everywhere from all that fiberglass maybe definitely like put a blanket over your lap or something if you guys are doing that that's like my first time working with exhaust wrap because I've always just done custom exhaust systems, whether I made it myself or, you know, bought mufflers and then just kind of did the rest custom. Anyways, 
greasy job it's done I think it looks good so gosh in one day's time God. so and then things we still got to do is our 200 rear tire and decide on paint I mean the paint's in good condition it's just it's just weird it's not my first choice but god damn so and then now I'm gonna do it tomorrow because I'm done for the day but uh, oh my sticky went out um, I am gonna weigh all the parts that we took off so we can kind of see how much weight reduction uh, we did in the process of bobbing this all out. I mean, I think it's a lot. Um, just between this box of parts here and then the mufflers and the seats and uh, honestly, these pieces of rear frame that I cut off, they are probably five pounds each. Like they are just heavy as shit. So, I think we got good weight reduction. Obviously, we replaced some parts with smaller parts, so, you know, we did throw this seat on in place of the other one. So, we put some weight back into it, but we stripped quite a bit of it off. But, god damn, this thing just looks like a fucking runner. My god. So it's really not hard. I mean, we use basic tools. I just have like my toolkit right here. Uh, pretty straightforward. I guess we did use a drill because I drilled um, the triple tree and then I drilled that one hole um, so we could mount the seat there. But other than that, we used no power tools of any sort. Um, it's just all stuff that any average Joe can do in their garage, and so I think stuff like that's pretty cool. You know, give your bike a whole new, a whole new look for just stuff that you can do yourself. So hopefully this video has been kind of helpful. Um, pretty much everything we did would just be the exact same for any Japanese cruiser so I'm pretty much any size it doesn't really like this is a 1500 so it is a pretty pretty big bike but it's literally all the same for like the 250s the 500s 750s it's just kind of a universal process but I enjoy the bobbers they're definitely not practical but it's just kind of fun to ride them around and tell you what when I pull up to the gas station and there's a $30,000 Harley next to me nobody talks to him nobody says nice bike but you know what they come up to me and they say dude I've never seen a motorcycle like that and it's like ah oh, thanks man it's like did you build it yourself hell yeah I did so stuff like that's pretty cool to say but so, so far we're just gonna call it a day here and then we're gonna paint and get the tire uh, probably tomorrow. I might order the tire, I'll see what shops in town here have, but just really happy with where we are right now with it. Gosh, so good, so good. All right, guys, this is the start of the second day here. We don't have much to do. I went and got a tire. So we ended up going with a 190 5517. And the only reason I did the 190 instead of the 200 like I was talking about is because our rim is only five inches wide, I believe. So we're really not gonna get the full width out of that 200 if we do if we had put that on so we're just going to go with the 190 because it's literally going to sit as wide as the 200 would have been on this rim 
We could go take our rim off and get it widened, but then that's gonna cost money and it's not really something that we'd probably do for a budget bob or build. So we're just gonna throw this tire on here. Um, I did ride the bike about 100 miles yesterday and uh, everything was good. Not one bolt came loose on us. It's really fun. You're really like stretched out with those uh, broomstick bars and then the controls, the foot controls are already pretty, pretty far forward already. Um, so you're definitely, you know, stretched out. You feel like you're on a sport bike, but it just is so fun. It handles so good for what it is. So really happy with the whole build and everything. So we're just gonna put on our rear tire. I did survey the public, family, and friends yesterday, and the green got a good response. Uh, so I think we're just gonna leave it that green color that is on it. And when I asked people like, really, why, why do you like the paint? And they all said pretty much unanimously, you hardly ever see green cruisers. So they thought that was really cool that it was like green and kind of a cool tribal almost type design. Um, so if the bobber factor wasn't already unique enough, now it has pretty much the most unique paint job I've ever seen on a Kawasaki Vulcan. So we're just going to rock it. It's going to be the mean green bean fighting machine. So, all right, well, let's get, uh, let's rip into this tire here, and then we'll kind of do a little, little video at the end here, kind of showcasing our work, and we'll try and make it look fancy. Um, and if any of you guys want to know how I mount all my tires, we're just going to spoon them on manually. I have a bike pump over here. It's what we air them up with, and that will seat the bead. I just use soapy water for my lube. It literally will cost us nothing, and we'll probably have this tire mounted in 20, 30 minutes, I'll say. So I'm going to make another video as well on my YouTube of how to mount your own motorcycles. So watch that if that would pique your interest at all if you do need tires and you want to do it yourself on the cheap. So, all right, let me rip into this tire, and then I will be right back. Well, guys, we got the rear tire on. Uh, so everything should be good to go there. Just a little bit wider than what we did have. Just another Pirelli. I'm not really, I don't really have favorite tire brands. Um, I guess I do Shinkos for motorcycles. Shinkos I use on everything and they have never done me wrong. And everybody seems to hate on those. Like, oh, Shinkos. Those are like a piece of crap budget tire. Like, Shinko tires are just a Japanese brand tire. And if your motorcycle's Japanese, why, like, why do you think Japanese tires would be shit, but the bikes would be good? So anyways, Shinko's I definitely like. We went with a Pirelli, um, and it just looks barely a smidge lighter, or wider, not lighter. It's definitely not lighter uh, than our 170 was. So, Glad we went with the 190. We had to replace the tire anyways. So that worked good just to have a little bit wider tire on our bobber build. And then after we finish a nice budget bobber, I like to have a nice budget beer. Keystone's never done me wrong. Natty is what I prefer. The good old natural light, but we'll settle for Keystone today. Goddamn. Tastes like victory, glory, honor. I am so happy with this bike. My God. Those bobbers are mean as fuck and they just like demand attention. You know, something about them that you see it and you're going to do a double take and a triple take. They're just super fun. Oh, I will sit on this for you guys so you can kind of kind of see the riding position. Like I was saying, it's like super forward and it almost kind of feels like a sport bike. But I will jump on it here. Make sure the camera's angled all right. Whoop. It's 
like obviously at the stoplights, you know, you can sit straight up, everything's completely fine, but when you are riding this bitch, I mean, you are in it to win it. You are a speed racer. Your back definitely has an angle to it. You're not sitting straight up, which if you had done drag bars that kind of had a slight bend and came back a little bit, you know, you wouldn't be so far forward, but I like the forward seating position and I like the broomstick bars. So that is about what we're gonna look like when we're cruising down the road on it. So should be super good. It is so fun, guys. God, I cannot even describe how much fun this bike is to ride. But so that's it. I think all we have to do now is get out our cleaning cloths, cleaner. We're gonna polish it all up, and then uh, then we just need the lights, camera, action, and drones. Let's get some drones going right now. Go. Oh. Yeah. 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 Uh, pardon me in my tone. You can't step to my throne. They ain't working like me. I did this on my own. You asking where we been? I, I don't know where to begin. I, all this dirt on my skin I just came here to win I'm more than a man, I'm a monster Somebody call the pastor, doctor I got a six inch for imposters So now I'm coming for the whole roster It's not a game, why you playing with me? You could double back, lose track, try and hang with me It must be in my veins Something you can't tame Cause I break the chains Can't control me Excuse me, your honor, but you can't hold me no longer. Can't you feel the vibrations? I broke out and left traces. Go ahead, try to catch me if you can, man. Well, that was pretty fun. And yes, I am a federally certified commercial drone pilot. Didn't know that, did you, kids? I try and be a jack of all trades. But, uh, okay, so now we have got our handy dandy digital scale. So we are going to weigh all of the parts that we took off and then we're going to minus the weight of the parts that we put on and see what our total weight savings are. Well, I guess I got to weigh myself first and see what I am so that then we can calculate this. Uh, let's see, 152. Wow, must have lost a couple pounds working on that goddamn bobber. Okay, let's see what our see what our first box weighs. All right, first box is forty eight pounds. So then that would be 35, so that's 35 more. And then lastly, just our rear fender that's filled with some different bolts and clamps and other things that we took off as well. All right, so that's 10 more pounds. All right, so then 35 plus the 48 plus 10 puts us at 93 pounds. And then just things that we put back on is this whole seat kit, that's two pounds. And then these bars are super light. We'll just say that those are a pound there. Um, 
So it's pretty much 90 pounds on the dot is uh, how much weight we took off this bike. So, I mean, 90 pounds. We made our motorcycle 90 pounds lighter by doing a bobber build. That's fucking absurd. So now let's figure out exactly what we can sell all of our parts that we took off for. And I'm just gonna figure the average price on eBay for all these parts that we took off. Uh, so like literally everything, the seat, the sissy bar, the rear fender, the stock handlebars, uh, like just everything we took off. I'm gonna figure out the average price of what those are going for on eBay, knowing that we're probably gonna get more than that because they're all in perfect condition. Uh, even the exhaust too. I wonder how much it's gonna be. So we just wanna figure out how much we could potentially make if we sold all those on eBay, which we will. So I'm just not gonna wait to sell them. I wanna get a rough estimate for you guys before, before we sell them all. So let's see here. Holy shit. Holy shit. So I just did average price of all the different parts we took off. Our sissy bar, our rear fender, the stock handlebars, the chrome mufflers, the front uh, exhaust chrome guards, uh, the floorboards that were on it, uh, the saddlebag bars that we had, all of our turn signals, tail light, and our total. Oh my god. So if we sold all those parts on eBay for the average amount, we should make $1,044. $44 we would make from bobbing this motorcycle. This is stupid. Holy shit. Well, there you go, guys. So, minus our $170 in parts that it costs to bob the bike, um, we could literally make like $850, more than that, like $860. We would make $860 from this bobber build if we sold all those parts. I can't even believe that. That's super awesome. So we're definitely coming out on top. Yeah, I got dirt in my tire because I got caught in the rain last night. So everything's super fucking dirty now, just as I sparkled it up yesterday so well there we go guys i think that's uh i think that's gonna wrap out wrap up the whole video so if this video was helpful to you um it would be helpful to me if you would like the video maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to see more we're trying to get the youtube channel monetized so that maybe we could make a little bit of revenue from it and just ideally keep doing this because it's definitely what I want to do is what I like doing. So thanks a bunch guys, keep watching. More cool stuff, more bobbers, more motorcycle things coming to you soon, hopefully, probably. Till then. <laughs>